Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of One Noteworthy Life, and in this video, I'm going to show you my annual plan for 2020. I'm using OneNote for Windows 10, and if you are using a different version or device, your screen may look a little bit different from mine. So this is a sample plan, which is based on my actual plan for 2020. Um, I made some changes to it just to demonstrate things in this video, but this is actually pretty close to my actual annual plan. And I do this grid every year and it functions as a yearly overview for me. It helps me to fit in bigger projects and travel and it tells me when I have uh, open time to fit bigger things in. So last year, which was 2019, I left this schedule much later than usual, usual and it worked out great. So I'm going to continue to do that this year. So I really like this overview because it's simple and quick to create, but also really useful. Now at this point, I've been doing it for a few years, so I copy it over from year to year and then just refresh the dates and add new information. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make this annual plan from scratch. So I'm starting with a blank table here, and the first thing we're going to do is insert a table. So from the insert menu, I'm going to go insert table, and we're going to go three columns wide by four tall. And then we can start typing in the months. Okay, so I've got the months all added in and I'm going to, um, this, you can probably see that this looks way smaller than the sample I just showed you, which is here. So part of that is, is because the font is small. So I'm going to go ahead and make the font bigger. And also, uh, this is a table in OneNote, and tables will grow uh, based on how much you have in each cell. They'll, grow, they'll add in um, height. So you'll see this table actually get bigger as I add things to it. So now that we have the framework all set up, let's start by adding some uh, events and dates to this grid. So start by adding your big rocks, like those things that, that are really big and um, kind of that you have to work around, and things that you know the dates of. So you can think about recurring things like holidays. So for example, in January, we have New Year's Day and um, in October, we have Halloween etc. Uh, you can also add birthdays. I'm a January baby myself. Um, and then um, you can also add anything that's specific to you. Like so if you have a school schedule, a work schedule, a schedule for your hobby like a sports team or something like that. Uh, you can add that in, and in my case, um, just for my business schedule, I have my tax return due in April. And you can also add things like if you go to any festivals or con uh, conferences, that kind of thing, whether it's for fun or for work, you can add that in. So I'm going to add a Star Trek convention. Um, so you can add anything else that you know of or anything that you think might happen um, and over time you'll learn what's valuable to put in here like what things came up that you weren't ready for um, and that kind of thing. Uh, I've just shown you how to enter a few items but you'll continue on this way until the grid contains everything that you want to add. So I'm going to flip back to the sample just because um, that's pretty much all there is to see about how to enter things. So even when you don't have an exact date you can put a placeholder in um, if you know that something always occurs near the middle of July. So for example, in my sample plan, I put a Star Trek convention right here in July. So even if I don't know the dates right now, but I know this con always occurs in this time frame, I can add it so I don't overschedule myself that month. Now this particular entry is fictional and just to demonstrate a placeholder for you, but I have gone to Star Trek conventions twice in fact, but I never wore a costume, but go ahead and have some fun with that. Uh, you can make fun of that in the comments if you want. Um, <laughs> be sure to include your vacations as well. Um, 
so I was just looking at this and saw that, you know, March and October were both pretty free. Um, so I put in a vacation in March and one in October, even though I don't have dates or plans or anything, at least the placeholders in there. So once you've filled in all the things you know of, then you can fill in things that you need to fit in, like things like a home improvement project or a non-urgent medical need, like elective surgery. So that's it. That's how um, we can create a very high-level summary plan for the year. And you can see how quick and easy it is to create, but it's really useful in spite of being easy to create. So now I'm going to give you three tips to make this even more useful. So those tips are to add links, um, add color or images, and then to evaluate each year. So I'm going to start with showing you how you can add links to make your plan even more useful. So in OneNote, you can create a link to a notebook, section, page, or paragraph inside of OneNote. And then you can also link to a website you know, on the web outside of OneNote. So if you'll notice, uh, in well, in my sample plan, I had a wedding in September, and then this is something that I would actually create, a wedding information page. So this contains the invitation and then various notes and information I might need for that day. And what I like about this is um, everything that I need for this event is on this page, and I'll have it with me even if I only have my phone on the day of the event. So to link to this page, I'm going to right click on the wedding information page from the page list. So that's right where um, it's shaded right now because I'm on that page. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select copy link to page. Then I'm going to go back to my sample plan and highlight that event, which is the GNR wedding. From the insert menu, I'm going to select link, and then you get this menu that probably looks familiar because this is the same way you would insert a link in many other programs. It has the text to display, and then in the second box, I'm going to click the link I just copied, and then click insert. So now we have a clickable link, and so I'm going to click that and show you, and it takes us back to the GNR wedding information page. Now you can also link to a website. Um, so if you had, like, say, a convention or something, you could link to the um, site for that. In my case, um, I'm going to link to the United States IRS. That's where we pay our taxes uh, here in April when my tax return is due. So I'm going to pull up the IRS website, and I'm going to copy the homepage address. I'm going to go back to this and highlight this event, which is my tax return due. From the insert menu, I'm going to click on link. We get the same menu pops up. I'm going to uh, paste in that address I just copied. And I'm going to click insert. And if I were to click on this, it would open up in the Microsoft browser, uh, the Edge browser. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because it will usually takes a little bit the first time I click it. And I don't want to spend the time during the video. But it would open if I click that. So those are a couple of examples of how you can add links to make your annual plan more useful. And you could do something like if you were storing your vacation information in a notebook or section of a notebook, you could link to that on your vacation. Um, I did show you how I created a page for that wedding event. And you could do that for other types of events as well and just store all the information you need, like confirmation numbers and that kind of thing. And then you could link to, if you were going to some sort of a festival or something, you could link to that website as well. So that's how you can add links to your annual plan to make it even more useful. So my second tip to make your annual plan more useful is to add things like colors and images. So to add color, you have a few different things you can do. You can, um, add, you can shade your table cell. So I'm up here in the January cell, and from the table menu, I'm going to click shading, and then you have all of these colors to work with. So let's pick a nice uh, orangey color for the new year, full of energy. And if you wanted to, you could make each of these rows a different color, so each quarter is a different color, or you could make each cell a different color, or whatever you wanted to do. There's also font colors. You can see that I have purple font and then I have black font for the events and then the purple is the uh, month, or the, the, yeah, the purple is the month. So if you're not familiar with where the font colors are, it's under the home menu and you click here under font colors and you have all of these theme colors plus a whole bunch more when you click more colors. So you can really, really have some fun with font colors. 
There's also highlighting options, and down here in December, I have just a basic yellow highlight, but if you click this highlighter icon, also in the home menu, you can see that you have a lot of colors you can highlight with. And then finally, you have page color. So from the view menu, you can click on page color, and you have these colors here, which are very soft, uh, diluted colors. And then you have the same more colors options, and each of these little stripes has a bunch of colors in it. So you really do have a lot of options for page color, and I can just click maybe this uh, light green one if you wanted to do that. You can also add images to, to your annual plan. So in this case, I used an emoji. Uh, this is from the Windows Emoji Keyboard, which you access by hitting Windows period. And um, I used the little dog emoji because my dog licenses do. And then I pasted it in. This is a sticker. Actually, I'm going to delete it and um, repaste that so I can show it to you. So I, I have that sticker stored under here at the bottom of my page. I'm going to click Copy and go back and paste it. And um, you can see that it was just you know a simple copy paste like you would do with any sticker and that it made my um, this row of the table really tall because of the sticker. I'm going to take out a little bit of the empty space there. Now you could shrink the sticker down and you can see that the row gets smaller or you could make it bigger and the row gets bigger. So if you wanted to you could put an image for each month and have you know a very image rich calendar you know, calendar if you wanted that or you know some people just think more visually you could use um, images like emojis for each of your trips you could use an you know a plane or something like that so you know whatever works you can have fun with it and if you do use colors or images and you post your pages online you can use this hashtag OneNote pretty pages up here at the top of the screen uh, to share that with other people and that way you can find other people's pretty pages and they can find yours. So the final tip I want to share to make this annual planning process more valuable is to evaluate each year. As I mentioned earlier, I copy this plan over from year to year and refresh it with new information, but I also take that opportunity to do some reflection on how my prior year plan worked out. So I learned two things from 2019. Uh, one is that I kept my 2019 annual plan really, really light compared to prior years, and that worked really, really well for me. Uh, I tend to way over schedule myself, and I also tend to way overestimate what I can get done. So having that light schedule just was so helpful to me. The other thing I noticed is that I felt really busy during the holiday season and I didn't like that feeling of rushing a lot and just being, you know, too overburdened with things to do. And I don't do a lot for the holidays. Um, I don't have a lot of events and a lot of buying to do and that kind of thing. It's just, you know, just the few extra things I do have to do during that time and um, the fact that everything's more crowded and things take longer and that kind of thing, it just made me feel busier than I like to feel. So um, I observed that and I learned from it and I and for next year what I did was I have in this yellow highlight to try and keep my schedule really light for those few weeks when it tended to be busy and then in November I have a note to start preparing for December. So I want to do some um, you know bulk food preparing and freezing and maybe do some shopping early and do some uh, grocery stock up runs and that kind of thing so that I have less to do during the month of December and I think that will help me really enjoy December a lot more. So um, that's it. We've now created a simple annual plan for 2020 and I've given you a few tips to make it even more useful. If you have any questions or comments or something you want to see in more detail, leave a comment on this video and I will do my best to answer you. If you want to see more videos like this as well as OneNote tutorials, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and let me know you like this by hitting the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye!